So in the last tutorial, I taught you how to sync audio and video. Uh, in this one, I went ahead and did the work for you, and I'm going to show you the multi-camera editing. And I actually cheated. I didn't do it manually like I showed you. I used a software called Pluralize from Singular Software. I highly recommend this uh, product, and you'll be able to find a download link for it or the link to this website in the product description or in the blog post. But it works with... Final Cut Pro, Media Composer, Adobe Premiere Pro, which we're using today, Vegas Pro, and I've never even heard of Idius, but it works. And uh, it has saved me uh, countless hours because I do a lot of this type of uh, work where I do multi-camera editing. So uh, here's what it'll look like if, if you use that. Now, if you had done it manually, you'll get the same result. You'll just have spent a few more hours working on it. But I'm going to import the clip uh, that was synchronized, which is basically an XML file, and um, it's wanting me to relink one of these files, which is not surprising. Mm, not that one. It'll be this one. There we go. That's because I synchronized it from my server instead of uh, on this computer. Um, then I'll open up this folder here. I'll open up the file, and there we go. All of the entire hour-long interview is synchronized for me. What I was showing you earlier manually is done here, except you'll notice that it actually made a mistake in this, in this one. And um, that's why it's very important to know how to manually sync audio, even if you have one of those automatic uh, uh, synchronization tools. And uh, in this case, it just made one mistake, and um, you can tell very visually where it goes. It just goes right here. Um, but we'll have to make sure it's in the right spot. I'm just going to go ahead and drop it right there. Now we're going to zoom in and apply the same techniques we did last time to make sure it's definitely synchronized um, with everything else. I'm going to open up some of this audio, and if it links up perfectly, we know we still have a sync. So the, the highlighted one here is the one we dropped. And it looks like we do have a synchron synchronization. And we're going to go ahead and... Okay, what are you going to do? Uh, Again, that's a lot of bad audio in there that we're going to disable, but that sounds like a good sync, and visually it's a good sync. So let's go ahead and get rid of all the audio we don't need, and we'll be able to move on to multi-camera editing. Again, I normally use two screens for this, so uh, the, the one screen is, um, is a little bit more um, compressed here. So I'm going to... Alt select so that I don't I don't want to delete the video that's associated with it. Um, I'm going to alt select all of these audio tracks. Why these? Because the ones we want are these two. The in this case, my good audio was a track attached attached to this audio track here, which had system sound. A very common thing would be for you to record audio separately on an H4n, in which case you delete all of the audio except for the WAV file that was externally recorded. This is something you only do once you know that you have synchronized your audio. And here I'm pretty confident, so I'm going to go ahead and delete it. I push the delete key. And I'm these are two linked files here. And I'm what I have remaining is just my good audio, which I'm going to play here for a second. Right. So basically with a lot of the video and now we have these you know one two three four layers of video that i'm going to select i'm doing out select here just to select it and not the audio i'm going to right click and nest it into a sequence now we have a nested sequence and the power of the nested sequence is that is is twofold first of all by right clicking i enable multi-camera and now if we go to the multi-camera monitor as soon as that loads, we have all four videos in, in one place, and we can actually play this. Video games are as organized daydreams. So, yeah. uh, and, and you can play, and you can actually click while playing. The, if this record button is on, it's actually changing the view. So I could click between the views. Um, here, let me just do a little example here real quick. Let me push play. Um, so this boys, view, boys this, view this view, yeah. this view, it's this view. It's more without this any view. of the... Trouble. Now watch. Now that I click, I just clicked between these. I'm going to exit here. 
and when I zoom in here, oh, look at that. There's a bunch of cuts. Um, and let's just kind of preview what those look like over here. The viewing for it, there's a lot of processing power required. Um, so it, it's, it can be a little bit clunky. And some of the effects are not represented in that multi-camera monitor. Um, but look at boys, this. Boys love to daydream. Yeah. Long it's war without any of the trouble. Pain. And you can just eat foods that end. And there we are. Now, I don't like those edits. I just did those for an example. So I'm going to... Control Z to take those away. Um, but notice that I've nested the sequence, but I need, I actually needed to zoom in. This is a 720p clip in a 1080 timeline and everything else is 1080p. So what am I going to do with, uh, with that now that it's nested? I could go to change it here, but if I changed it here, if I, if I went to motion and scaled it to 150, see it's fixed. But if I change to a diff different camera view, Whoop, we're zoomed in there too. So whatever you do here, I, I'm gonna undo that, there we go, will apply to everything, which is a problem. The, the power of a nested sequence is that this is nested sequence three, you can open up the nested sequence and there we go, there's all the individual files again. Now, I'm gonna disable these so I just see the one that I'm trying to edit. When I, now I can edit this, go to motion 150, See, let me just do this real quick to, to the other two. Okay, so that's those three clips are now edited. Um, now, uh, these are, anything I do to the nested sequence will reflect itself back. Let me go back to this one. Oops, sorry, that's the wrong one. This one, the syn synchronized one. There we go, it's zoomed in. Now, this doesn't, on, doesn't only apply to zoom. I can, I can do all of my editing in the multi-camera view here. And again, one view way is to use the multi-camera monitor like I did here. Another way is to just make a cut. Let's say we make three cuts. Look, and we'll right click on here, camera two, on here, camera three, camera four. So I was right clicking on these sections. And now, just kind of just to show you. Here girl, start having kids. Oh, that's a long clip. Let me just zoom in a little bit more. And it's going to change. When he's 47, if he's been there we are. Uh, again, I just kind of put those in randomly, so I'm going to take them out. Control Z, wonderful key, keystroke. Um, but so that that um, once you've made all these little cuts, um, you can then do all your cutting, all your editing, and then at the very end, do a color correction or advanced uh, graphics or anything else that would in the meantime slow down so right now this is playing Dave, fluidly you have a deadline? see that play that plays fluidly if I did a bunch of color correcting and advanced effects it wouldn't play smoothly and that would be a pain to edit I did that once and it was very it was a, it was a real pain um, so here you can do your edits then go to your nested sequence apply color correction you come back and it's all color corrected or zoomed in, or whatever you want. Zoom is one that doesn't affect speed, so I did it now. Um, so that's basically the, the basics of multi-camera editing. And let me just kind of um, uh, show an example of just kind of a workflow. So let's see. I'm just going to just do a little bit of editing here. I'm going to zoom in to the front. Here's where they said hi. And you'll just see a little bit how I, how I would do it. Um, I'm going to not use the multi-camera edit um, editor here at the beginning. So I'm just going to start here, wide view. Hello, Mark. And so I'm going to uh, zoom in here and because right as he starts talking, <laughs> I want to zoom in on the person talking. And the person talking is camera two, I believe. And you get to know these on a long clip. Um, oh, nope, that was actually camera three. And multi-camera editor will obviously tell you that. So now, watch this. Well, Mark, thank you for coming. Yeah. And now when he <laughs> talks, I want to go to camera two, to him. So this is what it's going to look like. Well, Mark, thank you for coming. Yeah, my pleasure, buddy. Thank you. Let's pray. Our Father. And let's let's go out to the wide shot. Okay, so where are we? We're in a big room. Let's Let's reflect that. Establishing the shot. Our Father and gracious God, we thank you for your goodness. We, we pray that you would uh, help. And see, about right here, I'd like to go back in on the person who's uh, praying there. So, camera two. 
Oh, actually, it was camera three. I keep forgetting, getting mixed up. Help us to understand what you have given to us. We pray that these questions would be uh, would be blessed, and the answers would be blessed. We surrender it all to you, Jesus. By the way, I was scrolling with my mouse there to kind of move it forward as we went through. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Mark, thank. Well, let's say we want to go back to Mark here, camera two. Mark, thanks very much for joining us here yeah. at this conference. Um, and then typically I'd go back to one, and, and you can you get the idea here. I wanted to begin by just noting that, I, asking why you didn't talk me into using these mics earlier than this. <laughs> so there, you know, I might go back to get the reaction. You like this? Yeah, well. Yeah. So there we are. There's a little bit of uh, editing in a nutshell. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial. And uh, you can go to fukushanmedia.com for more of these tutorials or to see some of my work or follow me on, uh, on YouTube. Thank you very much. In the run-up to this conference, uh, there, uh, oh, I don't know, a few weeks ago, there was an internet dust-up that happens from time to time. I've heard about things I've heard, on the I've internet. heard of those. Uh, and I, I've heard that you were involved in one of them. Yeah. Um, one of the um, controversies, one of the questions that I wanted to ask you about has to do with cessationism, non-cessationism, revelatory gifts. Mm -hmm. the, refor the reformed world, the Calvinistic world, um, has historically not been big on that. On, mm -hmm. um, yeah, since Warfield especially. Right. So um, do you see the reformed world divided neatly into cessationist, non-cessationist groups? Or do you think it's more complicated than that? Uh, would you say cessationist, non-cessationist, cessationists who believe the world is a weird place. Mm -hmm. um, but what sort of categories do you have when, you, when you're thinking about the experiences that you've talked about and some of the people yeah. who have talked about you having them? Yeah. Um, how do you, where do you, what shelf do you put them on in your mind theologically? Yeah, I see when it comes to the issues of the supernatural and what we call the charismatic, it's, it's like a dimmer switch in a room. In the reform world, there's a whole range, you know? So there's the guys over here, like the Trinity is Father, Son, and Holy Bible, you know? <laughs> they don't even know what to do with a third guy, you know? So they just sort of, you know. Uh, and then uh, all the way over to the other side where 